If you have said yes to Jesus, if you are trusting in him for eternal life, if you have received his forgiveness, everything changes. Listen, we are not pure because we do pure things. We are pure because Jesus is pure and his purity covers us. When we are in Christ, God says we are now a temple of the Holy Spirit. And everywhere we go, we are a walking temple light of the world and you've got to get this you are not your own you were bought at a price therefore honor God with your bodies we just had a team make it back from a medical mission in Honduras Linda Burl I see you out there her and her husband Seth have led this team for many many years and they uh, minister to hundreds and hundreds of people in Honduras uh, there's some folks from our church, Robin and Lynn Dears. Uh, there's Seth there. There's Linda playing with the kiddos. And uh, uh, it was kind of funny. Michael Archery, our very own Michael Archery and Johnny Ray, they actually went a little early and showed up to welcome this crew. Um, and Michael Archery was complaining of a, a sore tooth, and he got to be their first patient, and they just pulled it right out of his mouth. So get, help me welcome home the, the Honduras Medical Mission team, everybody. So thankful for y'all. Well done. Got a picture. I want to give another shout out here. Got a picture of Stephen and Kristen Adcock's son. Uh, love this guy, little Daniel. And he's holding a, a jar that they passed out at this fam jam last week, which was amazing. And they're handing it out to the kids all month. Um, and it's the, their focus is on forgiveness. But I thought it was so cool. They, these are some of our high schoolers at their house party. They are the ones uh, that actually got together and prepared these jars to be a blessing to our kids so help me thank our high schoolers for for doing that love 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 what's happening good things going on today I, I welcome you to church uh, we we're in a series called integrity uh, last week it was about time integrity and this week it's about temple integrity it's about our bodies uh, and I actually had a message I was excited to share with you just about the importance of health and fitness and, uh, and and glorifying God in our bodies but just over the last couple of days I felt like the Lord was uh, wanting to go in a different direction um, uh, but I, I do want to just give a shout out I'm kind of excited uh, if you know me you know I love exercise I love sports I love to come super competitive uh, and so this weekend I got to go to Opelika and I want to give a shout out to my doubles partner Jeffrey Barnett um, we played uh, some incredible players but we have to enter the 19 and over division and we always get called the OGs the old guys um, but I will have you know these old these OGs these old guys came home with the gold medal everybody so catch me outside how about that <laughs> And help me give a shout out to my mixed doubles partner. That's Christy Kind, a friend from Snellville. We battled these two. We made it to the finals and battled that team right there. Oh, youngster, six foot six, could reach anything. We battled for several hours and we came just a few points short. We took home the silver, but I told her I'd give her a shout out today. So say hello to the Kind family up in Snellville, Georgia. We had a blast, such a blast. Uh, but today I want to read to you a passage out of Corinthians as we focus on uh, today's uh, message. Um, uh, if you remember me talking about the Corinthian church just a few weeks ago, we're going to dive into that, that book this year. But the Corinthian church was so full of all kind of sin. This is the church that Paul wrote the letter uh, to the Corinthians and said, you know, I wish I could commend you. I wish I could encourage you. But really, you are doing more harm than good. Like, stop meeting. It, the, this church was so dysfunctional and messed up. And so I want to read a passage out of that book. But today, let me just pause and say, if you are fairly new with us, if you're a guest with us, uh, I want to set you at ease. I'm praying today that the Lord uh, would give us the gift of conviction today. And I just want all of you to learn to pray for and love conviction. Conviction is when God just pricks our heart and exposes a way in us that is leading us to a path of destruction. Conviction are the guard, is the guardrails on the interstate 
uh, to keep us from going off a cliff. Like we should be thankful. The Bible says God corrects those he loves. We should be thankful when he convicts us. And I'm praying today that you would get more than just good information, that there would be transformation in our lives today, that you would leave here different than the way you came in here, that you would not be the same person, that you would see yourself differently as we dive into the word of God today. Can you pray that with me? Amen, anybody? I pray for transformation today. Lord, convict us. And out of Corinthians, we have this phrase here, this verse that is very unusual. It says, this is Paul writing to the people in the Corinthian church. He says, now you say, food for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy them both. Y'all ready to go home? You good? That makes no sense at all to me. Actually, I've studied this, and this is a phrase that uh, we don't use. But it was common for the Corinthians. And this is what it is essentially saying. They had the notion in Corinth, in Corinth which is where this church existed, they had a temple, a, 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 a false temple to the goddess Aphrodite, who was like a sex goddess, and there was incredible sexual immorality. And there were estimates of up to a thousand prostitutes at this temple. And sexual immorality, much like our culture, and let's just be honest, uh, we, you almost can't escape it, but if in a room this size, many, many, many people in the room here are giving themselves to some form of sexual immorality. So we're not much different. But it was creeping into the church, and they were really making an excuse. It was almost celebrated in the church. So their mindset was that with God, God saves our soul and our spirit, but our bodies disappear. So they had the thought that anything that is physical doesn't really matter to God because that's going to disintegrate. And so any physical craving was totally acceptable to the Corinthians. And so they lived an absolute party lifestyle, and it was bleeding over into the church, and they were giving themselves to all of these uh, false goddess prostitutes, and church gatherings were becoming literally like orgies and horrible church experience and Paul writes it so he's addressing this this was their saying some translations say meats for the belly and belly for the meats their way it was their way of saying well it doesn't really matter because our physical life is going to pass away and Paul says not so fast he says, the body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead and will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in the body? For it is said the two will become one flesh. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. So flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. There is something different about sexual sin that it is causing damage to our own personal bodies. So yes, when you sleep with someone you are not married to, when you engage in watching pornography, when you uh, lust after someone you're not married to, all forms of sexual immorality is damaging us on the, from the inside out. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you have received from God? I want you to turn to somebody and say, you're a temple. Now that is with zero conviction. Listen, you got to get this today. You got to get this today because you are a 
temple, if you have said yes to Jesus, if you are trusting in him for eternal life, if you have received his forgiveness, everything changes. God now looks at you. Listen, we are not pure because we do pure things. We are pure because Jesus is pure and his purity covers us. We are not holy because we do holy things. We are cold, holy because he is holy. When we are in Christ, God says we are now a temple of the Holy Spirit. And everywhere we go, we are a walking temple light of the world. And you've got to get this. So now tell somebody, you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. You're a temple. Come on, with conviction, you are a temple. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. You got to get this concept, temple. Listen, temple is what God has been at. God wants to be with you. God wants to be from the beginning. He's just been looking. Here's, this was uh, what God had to shield us from. In the presence of God, sin is disintegrated. You can't, do not step into eternity as a sinner. Some of you are asking, well, I'm in trouble then. Anybody ever sin? Come on, raise your hand. If you didn't raise your hand, add one more to the list. If we step into eternity, into the presence of God as sinners, we will be disintegrated, cast out from his presence. That is why we need the covering of Christ. When we enter into God's presence in Christ, we're actually in Christ, and God doesn't see our sins. It is cast away. We are cleansed of all unrighteousness. He, we are, uh, though our sin be as red as scarlet, we become white as snow when we are shielded by the purity and holiness of Jesus, which is good news, anybody. So, it is critical that you get this concept temple because from the very beginning, God has been wanting to get to you and me, but he knew if he just showed up and as in our presence as sinners, we would immediately be wiped out. So from the beginning, God has been creating environments where he could dwell among his children and it not kill us. He's that holy. I can't imagine it. I can't, I have no concept of that, but God is so holy that sin just just it disintegrates. Front, I, w- I want to illustrate this for you because in the Old Testament, this is one of those examples of God's dwelling. And I want you to see this is you. This is me. If you are in Christ, this is what the Bible s- is saying you are. In, in the Old Testament, God instructed them to build Uh, This is a replica of the tabernacle in the Old Testament. When Moses rescued his people, leading them through the wilderness, God wanted to be with them, wanted to dwell with them. So they... He gave them instructions on how to construct the tabernacle. Now, anything outside the walls, that represents anyone in the world who is outside of the family of God, outside of Christ, and you are lost without him. Inside, this is where we want to get. Inside there is the Holy of Holies. Uh, You've got the outer courtyard. You go inside, you've got a holy room, and then inside that, A little bit further behind the curtain is the Holy of Holies, and that is where God's presence would dwell. But you can't just run in there, you would die. So there was this incredible process that they would go through, and this represents you and me. So let me take you on just a little tour. First, you have the the outer gate. There was only one entrance into the tabernacle. And I want to tell you today, there is only one way to God, and it is through the door of Jesus Christ, who said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Can I get a witness to that? Once you enter in through the altar gate, you come to this altar of sacrifice. And I want you to get the brutality of this. They would chain They had to be animals without blemish. They would chain them to this altar and the priest would come in and he would have to slaughter these animals. You need to get, this is how serious sin is. Life has to be broken. Life, blood has to be spilled for there to be forgiveness. And so they would 
slaughter these animals and spread their blood over the altar for, the, for God to release his forgiveness, to prepare them to enter his presence. And from there, they would go to the laver and God instructed them, now cleanse yourselves, cleanse yourselves, make sure that you are clean. And so the moment we say yes to Jesus, we are forgiven, we are saved, but then he has to do a work of healing in us. And he wants to cleanse us from the inside out. So you may be going to heaven, but you still got some junk in your life. And you still got some false beliefs in your head. And you're still listening to the devil. And you're still living like a, the, the old sinner. But that's not you anymore. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And so he, they would have to be cleansed. And then they would get to go into the holy room. And in the holy room, you would have some very important items. And over here, you have the menorah that would stay lit day and night. And this represents the fire of the Holy Spirit that empowers us to be the light of the world, always burning for the glory of God. And over here, you have the table of showbread. And that represents us feeding on the word of God, Jesus being the bread of life who sustains us, who fulfills all of our cravings, all of our needs. And then finally back here, you have one more item. It is the altar of incense, and this would just burn, and incense would rise to the heavens, and this represents just prayer and praise, prayer and praise always being lifted up to God. And once they would go through this process, then, then they could enter in through the curtains, and behind the curtains was the Holy of Holies, and that is where you would come to the Ark of the Covenant that represented this is the mercy seat where the blood would be poured out and God would release forgiveness to all of his people. This is where the, 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 the presence of God would dwell. And what I love about this is all of this is foreshadowing what Jesus would do for us and who we would become in Christ. One of my favorite passages, if you get an image of this where it describes the Ark of the Covenant, you have the mercy seat lid and on either side you have an angel with its wings over, uh, drawn over it. But after Jesus went to the cross, he entered the grave and rose from the grave and his, his people came to find him. And when they looked in the grave and looked in the tomb, you know what they saw? They saw this. Look what it says in John 20. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look in the tomb, and she saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. She saw the mercy seat of God with the angels where the blood had been spilled and forgiveness had been poured out. From the very beginning, God has been looking for temples for his spirit to dwell, his presence to dwell. We go all the way back to the Garden of Eden. That was the very first temple. It says, then a man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord. As he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, God had originally created us to dwell with us, to be with us. But what happened? Sin separated us from God and so he had to instruct them how to build the tabernacle so that he could once again reconnect with us have them make a sanctuary for me and I will dwell among them and then what Jesus comes as the next tabernacle as the next temple it says the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel which means God is with us he's come to live with us to be with us and now once Jesus See, in the Holy of Holies, it had the big curtain. Once they built the bigger temple, they had to have this really huge, thick curtain because if anyone went into the presence of God who was not cleansed, not forgiven, they would die. What happened when Jesus hung on the cross and gave his life and breathed his last? What happened in that moment? The veil was torn from head to toe, split apart. And from that moment on, we all now have full access to the throne of God. <coughs> so as soon as Jesus tore the veil... The Spirit of God was poured out on all flesh. And now God says, I want to make you my temple. 
I want to make you my dwelling place. So do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? It says, you are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Listen, men and women, young boys and girls, you, if you are in Christ, you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And God, from the beginning, has been saying no sin, no, no immorality, no impurities shall enter into my temple and my presence. Just imagine, would you carry Heritage Church with you to some of the places you go during the week? Would you carry me with you? to look at some of the things you've looked at during the week. Listen, you are a temple of the Holy Spirit and we are to walk and live as bright lights in this world, free from impurity, free from sexual immorality, free to bring glory to God, to burn bright night and day wherever we are, wherever we go. You're called to be a temple of the Holy Ghost. And I pray now, I pray now that God would give us the gift of conviction because we're not that much different from the Corinthians. We allow so much. We, we may not say meats for the belly and belly for the meats, but we got our own excuses and we rationalize. And we say, well, it's, okay. I'm not, it's not hurting anybody. Listen, if you are sleeping with anyone that you are not married to, you are defaming uh, this gift uh, that God has given us. Because when two come together sexually, you are united into one. And marriage is the relationship that God established to reflect his glory in the world. To show what unconditional covenantal love looks like and so if you are sleeping with someone you are not married to I ask you today to turn from that and repent I promise you you'll never you'll you'll hey if, get married give it's better to marry than burn with that passion um hey we just need spontaneous weddings right now you know what I'm saying like I'm asking God give us the gift of repentance today Can we just, Mark, you want to join me out here? But I, I, want, I want the Lord to speak to you today. I want the Lord to speak to you for you to ask God as your temple, where am I going? What am I doing? What am I seeing that is not bringing glory to you? And I pray for the gift of conviction today. I pray for the gift of repentance today. God, we all need this because you created us to dwell inside of us. We are now the holy of holies. We are now the place where the Holy Spirit comes and lives and desires to minister to this world. Would you just pause and just ask God, God, show me. Show me what I need to repent of. Show me where I need to go a different way. Ask God right now. God, because I'm going to tell you, no amount of willpower in the world will give you what you need to turn from some of the strongholds in this life. This is a spiritual matter. And so we need the power of the Holy Spirit. So will you now just pray where you are. Say, God, convict me. Convict me, God. Oh, God, I pray against seared consciences. I pray against cold hearts. I pray against insensitivity to your Holy Spirit, God. I pray for the gift of conviction today. I pray for the gift of repentance today. God, may, may it stink in our nostrils the things that we do that defame your name. That t When we take you to places that do not bring you glory, God. I pray, God. I pray for relationships to cut off sexual immorality and to pursue holiness, to pursue marriage, to pursue godliness, God. I pray for young people to, to just see the gift that that they have God and to save themselves for marriage that beautiful powerful gift that you've given God I pray for forgiveness for past sin and failures God I pray for those uh, strongholds that we just can't seem to break God I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit for strongholds to be broken today God that we not just have a good message today God that we be transformed today to be different than the way we walked in today 
God, let it be so. Would you pray where you are? God, speak to me today. Convict me today. Give me the gift of repentance today. Holy Spirit, you speak. You speak.